Today, we're going to show you how to use the matching tool. So when you log into your portal, you land on your member home screen. You'll click view member for whichever member you are looking to match recordings for. On the left-hand side, you see matching tool. And when you click on that, it puts you into the tool. So the matching tool is meant to help you locate recordings that have not yet been matched to your works. So this will help anything that maybe our matching team hasn't picked up yet, or maybe is cover songs, for example, is a great thing to use the matching tool for. This will help you locate all those recordings that are being used at DSPs that you can be getting paid on and matching those recordings to your works. Now your works do need to be registered in your catalog already for this to work. So step one is ensuring that your works are registered in your catalog, and then you can go use the matching tool and find any recordings that maybe aren't matched yet. So when you're finding these recordings and you're proposing matches or you're suggesting to our team, hey, this needs to be matched to this work, um, what, once those proposed matches um, are approved, um, they will be applied to usage from all periods. And this includes historical unmatched uses once we begin processing them. We haven't begun processing historical unmatched yet, but if you're somebody who's really keen on collecting those monies, it's very important that you use the matching tool and make sure that you've got all those recordings matched to your works. It's gonna make it easier on for us to help pay you those money. Um, so using the tool, you can search by up to six criteria and it can be you can search by one or multiple of these options uh, we allow you to search by recording title recording isrc writer and recording artists and again you can search using all six that gets you very narrow in your um, what you're looking for so if there's a specific thing you know is out there and you just need to find that recording you can get pretty close to it if you're trying to cast a wide net to see what are all the potential recordings that could be missing, you're able to do that as well. So again, you can search by one of these, you can by search by multiple, um, it's kind of up to you and, and, and what your goals are in this. So let's say I've got my recording title and my writer that I want to search for. Click search. And you'll see all these results. So important things to know about the search results is that search results are sorted by relevance and they are grouped together based on similar data. So what you're looking at right now are all the recording groups. What I mean by groups is when you expand, you can see all the recordings that um, are relevant to this. So that helps you really really it helps us make this a little bit more compact because if we were to just show you all the recordings in an itemized list, you could potentially be sifting through thousands of rows of data. So this helps you kind of do everything um, in bulk essentially. So another good thing to know is as you're looking through these groups of recordings and, and you maybe wanna make sure that you've got the right one, you can listen to the audio link. So when you click listen, this will take you right to the DSP site directly to that recording. You can listen to it and make sure that it's the correct one. Another thing to notice on this screen is are these dollar signs. If you're wondering what how much what that means, um, you can hover over this blue help icon, and this spells out what um, the estimated amount of royalties that are um, associated with this recording group. So those are big things to know. Um, so let's say I am looking at, at these and I say, okay, this looks like something that um, I need to, to match to my um, work. This one also is one that I need to match and perhaps this group too. You can go ahead and select all three of these. And that means that all of these recordings that are under the group, you're going to suggest that we match those recording to that work. You can select as many groups as you need to. Um, and, and basically you're suggesting the match. So when we collect, when we click on match three groups, 
In the next step, you're going to find the work in your catalog that you want to match all of those recordings to. So again, my work was 2000 Man. You can um, get more specific by picking whatever your secondary field is. We do ask that you put two search um, fields here so that we can get to the work more quickly. And you'll search for your work. And here's the work that I'm looking um, to match all those recordings to. You can expand and review the work details um, just as they are in your catalog. But once you decide, okay, this is the work that I want to match those recordings to, you'll hit select, and then we'll confirm that that's the action you want to take. You'll hit confirm, and then at that point, that's when you have suggested that those recordings be matched to the work. I'm not going to do that here just to make sure that I'm not um, um, suggesting in, in um, inappropriate matches, but when you do hit confirm, you'll land in the match history. So match history, it works just like your registration history. It gives you um, an, a list of all the matches that you've suggested and the status of where they are. One thing that's a little bit different about match history than, than um, the search is that once you suggest the matches in match history, we actually do break them out. So it'll be an itemized list of each individual recording as opposed to the recording groups. So you can keep track of each recording, what status they're in, um, when they've been accepted, rejected, whatever the case may be. Um, when you submit the matches, the suggestions, they'll obviously go in as submitted. And then once our team has reviewed them and decided um, they've been accepted, they'll show up as accepted. Um, and so you can keep track of it here in Match History. And that is how you use the matching tool.